time. You know, it's not by power, it's not by might. We all had different things going on for us in our various lives all through this past week. This new month of April has started well, I believe. I want us to bring, you know, open up our mouth this morning and begin to appreciate him. Uh, I, I know it, it, takes, it takes a grateful heart to know and understand being alive. Every time we wake up in the morning is a testimony. It's a miracle that we are all gathered here this morning. Father, we exalt you. Father, we give you praise. We magnify you. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for bringing us together again to worship at your feet. Father, we exalt your name. We give you all the praise. The psalmist says in the book of Psalm 66 from verse 1, he says, make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. I want us to make a joyful noise to God this morning. I want us to appreciate him because he has something in store for us. Our coming here this morning will not be in vain. We are not coming just to fulfill all righteousness. You know, I'm coming to church you know, on a Sunday morning, is not just a tradition. It should be uh, with an expectation. I want us to thank God for what he said to do in our midst. Father, we exalt your name. We magnify your name, O God. Unto you alone be all the glory. Lord, our gathering here this morning, O God, we yield ourselves to you, O God. We yield ourselves to you, O God. And we ask, O God, that, Lord, the expectations, O God, the expectations that we brought forward will not be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus. I can't hear us pray. I want us to be intentional now with our prayer. We are not praying because you know, we, we just want to pray. We are praying because it is it, it is the reason why we are gathered. We are, we are coming before God with a, with a heart open to him in expectation of what he said to do in our midst. Father, we exalt your name, O God. We give you all the praise, O God. Hear the praises from a grateful heart, O God. We are thanking you in advance of what you are said to do in our midst, O God. Mandali bro soto maligere mashanda la da da. Re ma zanta li bradiha. Ingala bro Soto mandala da da mendali bradaha masoto brali gereha ingala brasha dala boroha le brasa tala da 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 da. I want us to ask God for something this morning, O God. The expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. I want us to ask God. Ask God what you know, what we what we want to to achieve at the end of this service. Father, we yield ourselves to you, O God. We commit every vessel that will be used into your hands, O God. Father, Lord, move in our midst, O God. Let your shekinah glory. Glory dwell in our midst, O God. And at the end of it all, we'll be glad we came, O God. Because none of us will live here the same way we came. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Father, because we know you've heard us. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise God. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Okay, let's just welcome our neighbors to church. Welcome to the first Sunday of the month of April. Okay, please, can you move forward if you are at the back? Please, can you come forward?
ship Sing I have more than a soul You are actually giving God pleasure. So are you ready? Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Ebenezer. Ebenezer, 
that's where Samuel in first Samuel 7 laid stone and said, God is our help. Hallelujah. So this morning we are ready to praise God. Hallelujah. Shout and sing, you will be my help for 
in a two by two. Hey, I need you to get a partner. When I go back to young girl, get a partner. You are bigger than what people say. Yes, you are. And forever you will be my God. You are bigger, bigger, bigger. You are 
Till we're standing face 
hands and bless him. Also, David, can you lift up your hands this morning? Let's lift up our hands and bless the name of the Lord. Can you take the next one minute to magnify the name of the Lord? Come on, give him thanks. Worship him. Magnify the name of the Lord this morning. Don't hold anything back from him. Come on, give him thanks. Give him praise. Worship him. Let him know that you appreciate him. Let him know that he's faithful. he has been faithful to you. Let him know that without him, you are nothing. Come on, he has been your Ebenezer. See how he has brought you this year. Come on, give him thanks. Give him thanks. Say something good to him. Oh, Father, we worship you. Come on, give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Come on, give him thanks. Don't hold back this morning. We bless your name. House of David blesses your name this morning. Do I have a witness in the house? Can you lift up your hands and wave it to the Lord this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Glory, honor, power to the God who reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Blessings and the praise to the God who reigns Come on, give a praise. Amen. We sing glory, glory, honor, power to the God who reigns forever. be enough to say thank you to you many we started the year together many are no longer alive some are not even with nowhere to be found but your loving kindness and your tender mercies have kept us and so we give you thanks we give you praise how excellent is your name glory and honor power and majesty dominion and praise be unto your name alone father let the meditations of our heart and the words of our mouth be pleasing and acceptable unto you 
you have done us well you have done us well you have done us well we have no reason to complain you have done us well we give you praise <laughs> name we have worshipped ladies and gentlemen this morning before we go ahead I want you to take the next 30 seconds whatever posture you want to take to appreciate the Lord don't take it for granted being alive is not a right it is a privilege whatever you are to you whatever you have is a gift there was someone that gave it to you can you appreciate the giver of all things I wanted to give him thanks this morning if you can think, you can thank. Not being able to do it is Let somebody give the Lord praise this morning. Let somebody give the Lord praise over your life, over your family. Come on, over your children. Over your health, your finances. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped. As you have praised the Lord this month, in the month of May, you will praise the Lord. In the month of June, you will praise the Lord. Let me say to you this morning, praise this good on you. I pray for you that what the Lord will do, that will make you to praise him recklessly. May you do for you this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that things of thanksgiving will never cease in your life again. In this month of April, the Lord will march you forward. Do for you what you want to do. Let somebody shout the shout. Let us be seated. I want to welcome every one of us to church this morning. Thank you, choir. Let's celebrate our choir, the best side, the best choir on this side of heaven. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Make His face to shine upon you, and may the Lord be gracious unto you, and send you help from His holy sanctuary. May you go from strength to strength. May you go from victory to victory in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly, if this month is your birthday or your wedding anniversary, I want to be the first to congratulate you. Can you rise up on your feet? If to this month is your birthday or your wedding anniversary, come on, can we appreciate them? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you today. May the good Lord bless you. Hallelujah. I want to be the first to congratulate you, to usher you and to bless you as you come into a new season of your life. It is my prayer for you that in this season that God has brought you into, you will not labor for another man to inherit. I pray for you that whatever did not work in previous years, in this year, by the glorious light and the empowerment of the Lord, may you work for you in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. What money can buy and what money cannot buy, the Lord will put in your hands in the name of Jesus. The Bible speaking in 2 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 2. And Samuel said, it was God who advanced Aaron and Moses. I pray for you. This your birthday will be for your advancement. You are moving forward. You are getting better. You will never have a better yesterday. We will celebrate the goodness of God in your life. More and more in the name of Jesus. For your wedding, receive new wine. The Lord will preserve you till the day of his coming. You will not suffer loss. And it shall be well with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed.
Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly, if anybody here has a testimony, I only have a slot for five people for five minutes. If you have a testimony, quickly, after five, we shut it. Quickly, if you have a testimony, one, two, three, four, five. I see one person coming. I see, Lolami, are you coming? Two. I see two. I see still in year three coming. I see another one in year four coming. I see another one in year coming five. Ah, ah. Praise the Lord. Once I was blind, now I can see. Let's celebrate Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for life. I want to thank God for everything, for my family, my home, for all that he has done. Most especially, I want to thank God for the healing of my daughter. Like um, three, four weeks, she fell sick. We thought it was a joke that we had to rush her to emergency. They didn't even, have, normally if you go to emergency, I'd packed gari meat. I'm like, I would spend uh, two, three hours and I was hungry. But make we got there, they took her in immediately. We didn't even know it was that bad. And then they admitted her. The following week, they released us. We went back. And then two days later, we just suddenly noticed that she stopped working. She stopped crawling. She didn't... Initially, I thought maybe the sickness. Okay, she's not yet. But after a while, I would intentionally put her down. I'm like, oh yeah, come. She would just stay there. She would not move an inch. So we had to carry her back again. Rushed her back to emergency. In it all, I just want to thank God. We had the pediatric guys, the, neuro, uh, the neuro guys. We had the disease um, infection session. Everybody was like, we've not seen this before. Someone says, I've been a doctor for 13 years. I have not seen this particular manifestation. And so they were studying us. Every morning they would come in with their uh, other doctors, ask questions, test her. You know, there were several things they did. I just want to thank God that she's hale and healthy, she's back to working. They found nothing. Unfortunately, they tested, uh, they had to do a spinal tap also. You know, they were just testing, testing, but they did not see anything. We just thank God that God gave them wisdom. Whatever the drug they eventually used for her, it worked, and we are grateful to God that she's perfectly fine now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May our healing be perfected and completed in the name of Jesus. And such affliction will never arise again. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I came to Calgary in early 2021 for school, for a four-year program. And so far, God has been so faithful. As of yesterday, I've completed all the requirements to graduate. <laughs> God has been so good. Since I came, I haven't lacked anything he has provided. I thank Pastor for his prayers, for his encouragement, and I thank God for just for being there. Because it wasn't easy, but God was always there. And for that, I'm so grateful. Praise the Lord. We thank God and we trust the Lord that he who has started and who has brought this season to a pass, it will open the next chapter for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, God has just been so good to me. Um, I don't even know where to start, but I just want to thank God. I started medical school January 2015. And um, after I finished my clinical rotations, I had some roadblocks, financial roadblocks. I had to enter into the workforce because I had to pay for my final year of school. But my support, my family, they've really been there for me. But then God was just telling me, just go, you know, I'm going to make a way for you. So when I was, when it was time to apply for residency, I was seven months pregnant. I was like, this is not really how I planned this, but it was a year's process. I started last year. And uh, I remember after I applied all around Canada, because I was taking a risk. Somebody was telling me I applied to both U.S. and Canada, but I was like, I'm, I had to fly to U.S. to go and do an exam, and I was seven months pregnant. I was like, I really cannot do that now. I'm just going to apply to Canada because this is where I want to stay and see what God does. And so after I applied everywhere, people, I only got one interview. <laughs> and I remember when I got the one interview, it went from excitement to panic because I was like, one interview, how is this going to be possible? 
So when I entered in today, we had WhatsApp group for everybody that was interviewing for that position. And one day I just went through the list of people in the WhatsApp group who are over like 100 and something. And I said, how am I supposed to, how are they supposed to pick me out of, they're only picking eight people out of over close to 200 interviewers. My score was okay. It wasn't that great when I'm comparing to others. And I just told God, I don't know what, is, what I'm going to do. The day before my, the two days before my interview, I just said, you know what, I'm stopping all this group practice, this one telling me what to say. I just said, I'm overwhelmed. God, just speak to me and tell me what to do. And something inside me just said, just go there and be yourself. And my interview was meant to be like 90 minutes to close to two hours. So um, the, the last person that will know the result by March, March 19th at 10 a.m. That's how bad I know the date. <laughs> so we came on that day, and I couldn't open the email. My husband was, he, took, he was off work that day with me. He was like, open it now. It's, it's past 10. And I was like, I don't know. If this doesn't work out, I think I'm done. I'm just going to just con go back to my work that I was doing. So when I opened the match result, I want to give God all the glory that I matched into family medicine. I only got one interview, one interview, and God showed up for me. I don't know how he did it. I don't, sometimes I question why they picked me, but I know that it's God that was shining his glorious light on me. My second part of the testimony is to thank God for the backing God has put in my life spiritually, financially, a loving family with my mom, my parents. I want to thank God for my husband, the best man on this side of heaven. Yes, I know he's blushing, but he's been there for me, and he never wavered in his support for me, for my dreams. And I really want to thank everyone. Pastor and Stamoni, God bless you. I know I stressed you a lot throughout this journey, but we thank God, and I want to give God all the glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. To God alone be all the glory, and the best is yet to come. We are trusting God for a new season for you in the name of Jesus. That this next season will be effortless in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. My testimonies are a lot. Moving. But I've just come to sing in a little summary what he has done for me. I love your voice. For you have led me through the fire in the darkest nights. You were close like the water. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived. In the goodness of God. Oh, oh, oh my love, you, you have been faithful. Oh, my life, oh, oh my life, you have been so, so. I will sing of the goodness of God. Somebody just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Don't worry. Very soon you will know why she sang the song. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to thank God for my cybersecurity exams. Um, I was preparing for my CISSP exams. I remember when we were told to write prayer points. It was one of the prayer points I put down. I'd heard a lot about the um, CISSP exams, that they're tough, um, uh, very difficult to do well in the exams and all that. And so I was preparing and everything. And I remember thinking, I can't write this exam again because I'm like, I don't want to put my family through this again. I would 
go to the library. My husband will be home with the kids. Like, he will take care of them, feed them, prepare food and all that. I will, so I was just like, I don't, want to, I don't want to have to do this again. And so I did, I did the exams. And thank God I did well. I passed the exams. And um, I think it was in March I officially got the certification because that's even a different process. After passing the exam, getting the certification is actually another process. I actually got certified, and I give God all the glory. Praise Hallelujah. We pray that the Lord who has given you this opportunity and this grace, you will do great things with it in the name of Jesus. If you give a testimony, just rise up on your feet. Father, thank you for all your daughters. Where are the men? No wonder the women saw Jesus first. Lord, your daughters have come to say thank you for what you have done, acknowledging the fact that you are the giver of all things. Lord, I present them to you today. You are the perfecter of Israel, that that which you have done, let it be perfected in the name of Jesus. We seal the testimonies with the blood of Jesus, and we declare that it is irreversible in the name of Jesus. And for everyone trusting God for a testimony like this, this month, the Lord will show you mercy, and the Lord will come through for you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. My question to you is this, whose testimony is next? Okay, I, I didn't hear much, so I, 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 I could believe that. Because there are angels here, you know, and we need to be mindful. There are angels assigned to this service. And so your words are powerful to deploy them to work. And so whose testimony is next? As Gabriel said unto Mary, may it be unto you according to your words in the name of Jesus. Few announcements before we go into the word. Uh, please, our spiritual awareness week um, comes up from April 15th to April 21st. So what that means is we're going to be waiting on the Lord. Um, throughout that week, we're going to be praying and fasting. So please, let's mark it. April 15th to the 21st is our spiritual awareness week. And the theme for that week is, my case is different. My case is different. It will be a wonderful one. Um, Again, by the grace of God, on April 20th, the marriages under 10 years old will be having their program. And please, if your marriage is still under 10 years or you want to partake of it, please make sure you make yourself available. It's going to be here at uh, the Rivera Conference Center here, uh, 10 a.m. in the morning, I believe. 9 a.m. in the morning. It's going to be 9 a.m. Uh, and the theme for that event is the modern marriage. And by the grace of God, ministering at that event will be Pastor Benga Komolafe and Sister Biola Komolafe. So please, if your marriage is 10 years and below, make sure that you are there. We want your marriages to be solidified, to be able to withstand no matter the challenges of this time. Again, please, um, because God has been faithful to us, church is growing, and we thank God we take it not for granted uh, we, are becoming, we are starting to see that there will be need for our transport department to be back in effect. God has blessed the church. We have three buses, three vans. So we have them. They're just sitting down. They're not doing anything. We have a, we have a 17 or 18-seater, you know, wonderful van. And so please, if the Lord lives in your heart that you can assist in picking people to church and dropping them back, please see Dikin Dapo Kalejaye. And the Lord bless you as you do that in the name of Jesus Christ. And lastly, today, by the grace of God, after service, we'll be visiting the Glory Tabernacle. <laughs> One bit of information for us, I know it might come, uh, some of us might feel somehow, please, because of the safety that is required, children will not be allowed in. Please, uh, let's just have that in mind. Because of safety, uh, children will not be allowed in. So we're trusting God. It's going to be very fast. By the end of the service, there will be people there to take us through. And you will be glad because the Lord has done us well. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Father, bless your word. Let it not be ordinary. Holy Spirit, take charge and let your word, your word find expressions in our heart. In Jesus' precious name, amen. By the grace of God, this month, we're going to be looking at a special topic, which I believe is critical to the season that we're in. Our theme for this month is going to be faith and finances. Tell your neighbor, faith, faith. and finances. Amen. Say to your neighbor, faith, faith. and finances. Amen. Come on, tell your neighbor again, say faith. And finances. Through this word, through this month, we're going to be unveiling quite a number of things for us that will enhance our finances through scriptures. Because some of us, the ideologies that we have about when it has to do with God and our finances is wrong. And so we're going to be correcting all those ideologies this month. And it is my prayer that as you go forward through these teachings this month, your financial dominion will do what will thrive in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The fact is this, ladies and gentlemen, if I take, I was privileged, and don't get me wrong, we received all the prayer points that people wrote at the beginning of the year. We prayed over them. But one thing that was synonymous to the prayer point is this, 97% of the prayer points has to do with financial dominion. And that tells me that if we're to look at it very critically this morning, if there is anything that anyone here will want to change in this season of life, is our finances. But the fact is this, if we understand how God feels about it, it will do us good. Most of the time, what God has put in place for us, we do not know through different ideologies that we have. And so when something is written, which is for our profiting, and we're able to understand it and implement it, then it will change our lives. The truth is this, ladies and gentlemen, folks, financial freedom is God's desire for all his children. Financial freedom is God's desire for all his children. And the true convictions about this will help you and change the life of every believer. Another thing that I wanted to know is this. Without this clear understanding and certainty about this, a lot of believers are today suffering and have forgotten that the same Jesus who died for your sins on the cross, who died for your infirmities to be removed, is the same God. The Bible is speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. He said, Jesus, who was rich, became poor, that you and I may become what? Rich. He lowered himself so that we can take his place. But if we don't understand it, and we don't have this knowledge, God forbid that we are just living life aloof and not redeeming time as God expects us to. It is very, very important that we understand this. Jesus paid the price for our healing and also for our financial status, from being poor to being rich. As a believer, listen carefully, if you are, not, if you are limited economically, your dignity and every part of your life will suffer for it. If you are limited economically, your dignity, your morale, your confidence, who God has created you to be, will suffer loss. May our dignity not suffer loss in the name of Jesus. And so God expects us to understand this. And my prayer is this, that this month, the mercy of God, I'm only looking for 50 people, 50 people, that the mercy of God will translate their financial dominion to a new status in the name of Jesus. If that, if you are one of them, can I hear your loudest amen? Amen! Praise the name of the Lord. Now, when something is written in scripture, it is good. God's servant, Bishop David Oyeko, said something. Financial dominion is the ability to totally conquer lack, poverty, financial hardship, and any effect that it creates. There is always tension in the house where there's no money. There is tension between husband and wife. No matter how love you do for you do, when there is tension, when there is no money, that love can become sour. And so, financial dominion is the ability to totally, not for a season, totally conquer lack, poverty, Financial hardship, and what? And any effect that it creates. The effect that financial hardship, dominion creates, jealousy, strife, stealing, killing. Those are the effects that comes when you don't have, that people will do anything to get. But this is the plan of God that you and I, we should live the best of life through Christ Jesus. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Again, listen carefully. According to God Bishop, God servant Bishop David Oedipo, no man can empower himself for financial dominion. 
It is only God that can do this. And until he empowers you, we are utterly powerless. And that is why the Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. We've seen people start well. Look at our life. Look at our world. They start well, buoyant, financial. They were capable. But after years, they've been forgotten. Why? If God is not the foundation, God will never sustain it. And so, to be rich is not the problem, but to be rich per time for, its, for life is the most important thing. And the, the pain of once being rich and not being rich again is enough to destroy a man. And so, the plan of God is not for you just to have financial dominion for a season, but it should be a perpetual thing. And God delights in our prosperity. God delights in it. The Bible tells us that in Psalm 35 verse 27. It says, let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Your prosperity, it gives delight to God. That you can sponsor the kingdom. That your children are living well. You can plan to live an inheritance for your children. You can help people. It is the pleasure of God when you are buoyant financially. It is the pleasure of God. And so if that is what God is saying, that is what we should emulate. That is what we should want to see in our lives. In the book of Job 28, verse 7 and 8, the path no bird flows, knows, nor as the falcon I seen, the proud lions have not trodden it, nor as the fierce lion passed over it. Job began to speak that there are certain dimensions that are not found in the land of the living, but will take the wisdom of the spirit to take us to such path. When it comes to financial dominion, ladies and gentlemen, no man can make another man rich. No man. If anybody promises you that they would make you to be rich, they've only deceived your life. They've only deceived your life. Because no man will learn something in the school of disciples. Every man wants to outshine the other. If a man can make you rich, you think you want to be richer than him? But we serve a God who can give to you liberally. God does not need to contend with you. He has it all. Silver and gold belongs to him. And that is the father that we serve. The plan of God is for God to see. God wants to see our families thriving, our children doing well. If we don't understand this concept, some of us, God forbid that the destiny of our children are truncated. There are some children here that God wants them to go to Harvard. There are some children here that God wants them to go to Stanford. But if the parents cannot afford it, how would they go? If it is the plan of God for those children to be at such a height so that they can dominate in their sphere of life, and the parents cannot afford it, you have failed those children. You have failed them. You have failed them. You have failed them. And so we need to understand this process that it is God's plan for us. I pray that the wisdom of God will show for you and I in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3, he says, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and lose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors, so that the gates will not be shut. I pray that your gates this season will never be shut. Yeah. Your financial dominion gates will never be shut again. Yeah. Am I speaking to only one person here? I said your financial dominion doors will never be shut in the name of Jesus. He says, I will go before you and make the crooked place straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron. And I will give to you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by name, am the God of Israel. I pray for someone for the sake of God's kingdom and for the integrity of the word of God that this season your financial dominion will evolve. Yeah. I said it will evolve in the name of Jesus Christ. What is God saying to us through here? God is saying to us that there are hidden riches which our normal eyes cannot see, except it, take, it takes us there. Is the shepherd, we are the sheep. The sheep does not know where the pasture is. It is the shepherd who takes the sheep to where the pasture is. And God is saying, enough of using your brain to decipher where you ought to be in life. When you are linked to him, he's the one that can give you the idea that will make you to thrive in life. I want you to understand this. If I'm to tell you now, write down three things that you know that, that the lack of money has cost you and your family, some of us can write 50. If I say write three things and give it to me, what the lack of money has cost you and your family, some people here will write 100. 
And that is why we must understand that this is God's plan for us to live in this season of life, ladies and gentlemen. From 1st of April, I was looking at the bill. I checked, you know, I was, going, I was doing something a few days back. I was looking at just my phone bill. And I looked at the bills of the children. And I saw, because of 1st of April, now the government of Abata, on every phone, talks and text, they're charging $25. Just talk, talk and text. I saw it in the bill. And I called. I said, what is going on? He said, well, we should go and meet the government of Abata. $25 just to have a phone that has talk and text. It has been implemented into your bill. Not only that, everything is changing right in front of us. Salaries are not increasing. And we still want to live the kind of life that God wants us to live. It will only take God with the eyes of the Spirit to do for you only what God can do in this season. Remember, the Bible says for the world where there is a casting down, for you and I should be a lifting up. I pray for you this season. It shall be your season of being lifted up in the name of Jesus. Can I hear your loudest amen? 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Can I hear you praise the name of the Lord? Can I hear you praise the name of the Lord? Now I want you to believe this. That if we are to take a survey of the people this morning and ask them what increase they desire. Some people might not say longevity of life. They just want more money. If I ask you now, where in, in which area of your life do you desire an increase? Everybody will say financial increase. But what do we see? We see people long for money, do everything for money. At the end of the day, they pay with it with their lives. And so we need to understand that the blessings of God in naked rich, it does not bring any sorrow. And that is the kind of life that God wants you and I to live. God has given you and I the epitome of his plan for us. That we should live an inheritance for our children's children. How many people here can say you have a will that your children will enjoy? How many people here in your 50s that you can say you have a will that your children's children will enjoy? When you yourself are even enjoying it. How will your children's children enjoy the plan of God is for his word to be fulfilled in our lives. I pray for you this month. May your financial dominion evolve in the name of Jesus. Amen. Financial dominion is God's plan for every child of God. Like I've always taught us that whatever is written in scripture concerning any aspect of our lives is God's plan for us. And in as much as we follow the required instructions from God, we will obtain the promise. We will obtain the promise. In John chapter 16 verse 12, he said, I have many things to say to you. But you cannot bear them for now. Jesus was speaking here that there are still many things that I need you to know about the kingdom of God. About kingdom finances. About how the kind of life that I want you to live. That how you should live in life. You can never negate financial dominion in the path of you living a glorious life. You can never. And that is why even Christians are stealing. Because everybody wants to live well. How many people here always say, if you want to know that you are, you are seemingly comfortable in this, can you tell me now, you can sit down for the next six months without working and you pay all your bills? How many people here? For the next six months, you will not get out of your house. You will be eating, ordering all your food from superstore. They will deliver to the house. You are not doing anything. Mortgage is paid. All your utilities are paid for the next six months. How many people here? He takes the grace of God. That is exactly the guide of God, the kind of life that God wants us to live. I've met families here. I've met people here. In winter, they don't spend it in Calgary. They go to the Caribbean. They stay there. When it is summer, they come back. Because they said, we don't like the weather here. It's too cold. What about work? We work from there. Because they're doing their own thing. And that is the kind of life that God wants you and I to live. Because without that kind of life, you will not have time for the things of the kingdom. We are so much encumbered into three shifts, four shifts. Oh, can I have an extra shift? You are running from the south to the east to pick up another shift. Whereas every, there are things that are lacking when you are living that kind of a life. But God expects you and I that one job can be enough. That he will give you. That one job, one platform can sort out your destiny for life. May that be your location in the name of Jesus. I said may that be your lot in the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 15. And to one he gave five talents. And to another two. And to another one to each according to his own ability and immediately he went on a journey.
What is God saying here? According to his own ability. The giving wasn't according to their prayer, to according to their fasting, but according to their abilities. For God to give you financial dominion, there are certain abilities that you must have. You can never pray yourself into financial dominion. You can never. You can never fast and pray yourself into financial dominion. And that is why a lot of children, have been, a lot of Christians have been cheated. We just continue to pray, continue to pray. Seven days prayer, 10, 21 days prayer, 40 days prayer, 100 days prayer. Ah, oh, God bless me, increase me. Bah, man, miracle money, miracle money, miracle money. Alert, alert, alert. You will alert and wait and wait. No alert will alert you. Until principles are met, no alert will come. And so God is looking ever, always looking for our preparedness. Ah, are you prepared? I always say it and I boast in it. Then no matter where a man is in life, what you are going through, God is never the problem. Man is always the problem. No matter what you're going through, God is never the problem. Man is always the problem. Man is always the problem. So what are we saying? Financial dominion is never the work of luck or what? Coincidence. But rather a path which when followed, you will arrive there. It is not just about dollar pounds, ETC. It is more than that. There are three things that I'm going to be sharing with us that must happen for you to do what? If you must see changes in any areas of your life, there are three things that must happen if you want to see any changes in your life. If you want your financial status to change today, 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 if you look at your life with these three things, you will see whether it will change or not. What is number one? The number one is recognize the need for that change. Some of us have never recognized for the need. We have never recognized the need that our financial dominion has to come or financially we need to evolve. Because you will still run, no matter if tomorrow you receive something in your mail, buy one, get one free, bogo. You will still go. Very soon, we're going to get into summer now, you will see garage sales and you're wondering, where are all these things coming from? Where are all these things coming from? I was saying to my wife, a few weeks back, I was just, I just saw a notice on my, you know, um, messenger. I just saw something, somebody who posted something. I mean, I love cars, I love, you know, accessories. And I said, I looked at a particular set of rims, and I went to the website of the one selling, the original person, the manufacturer of that wheel, and I saw it. And they put there $3,200 for, for four alloy wheels without tires, Asante wheels. And this guy wants to sell four, when I saw it, for $560. I said, no, something is wrong. So I now email, I sent the guy a message. I said, is it for per one or for the four? He said the four. Ah. <laughs> I said, something is wrong here. I said, where are you? said, Red Deer. I told my wife, I'm going to Red Deer. <laughs> I called my son. We got into the car. We got there. When I saw the thing, I said, what could have happened? The guy said, I, I just need money. I need to pay for my... I said, what? I said, oh. And I saw one of them. I said, one has a dent. But you didn't post that dent. He said, you know what? From the 560, you sold it for me for $300. With tires, brand new tires, and I carried the phone into my car, and I came back home. My son was saying, Daddy, is anybody following us? I said, nobody's following us. <laughs> you see, that is what happened. A lot of us, we've never recognized the need for that change in our lives. We have never, until you are disciplined to deny yourself, you can never be successful financially. That not everything you see, you must buy. Until you see the recognition, you recognize the need for that change, that change will compel you to do a lot of things differently. That change will compel you to do a lot of things differently. In that change, you will see the future of your children. You will see their future. Ten years from now, you will see their future. But a lot of us, we have never recognized it. I love Mike Murdoch. Mike Murdoch said, you can never impose change on any man until a man sees the, the, he recognizes the need for it. You can never impose change on a man until that man recognizes that there is a need for that change in their lives. You cannot impose that change. You cannot. There are three pursuits, I believe, should occupy a man in his lifetime. What is that? Number one, the, what? the knowledge of God, the pursuit of his assignment, and the pursuit to maintain quality relationships. Now that we're talking about financial dominion, there are still people who don't see the need for it. The first law in the school of prosperity is not money, not capital, 
not connection, the first law in the school of prosperity is what we call the law of recognition. Until you recognize that there is a need in your life, you will never activate the need for it. And, and until you are able to see what your financial dominion can do in your life, can do in the life of your children, your family, you will not implement it. You will still continue with Bogo. You will still continue to spend money anyhow. And God is saying, look at, look at, even with this $25 an hour, look at the way this person is living. Look at the way he's living, $25 an hour. And this one is trusting me for $60, $70 an hour. Eh? So that you can bring reports to my name. You know what, Gabriel, just leave him. That resume, just let him come. Let him maintain. Let's maintain him like that. Until there is the, the law of recognition becomes paramount in our lives. Our financial dominion can never evolve. And so, so financial dominion was never designed to be a pursuit for man. It was never that we should pursue it. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things. The knowledge, the knowledge is important. The recognition is very important. Recognition will do three things to you. Compels you to a sense of responsibility. Responsibility, a sense of responsibility. Number two, seeing the need for financial dominion breaks limitations and excuses. A lot of us, some people can excuse their destiny away. Why they're not doing the right thing? There is always an excuse. I always say to my children, oh, mommy and daddy will call them. Why is it? And daddy said, no, don't always look for an excuse. Just say, I'm sorry. Until you come to the point where there is no more excuses in your life, you can never be wealthy. You can never. That the things that you're meant to do, you are doing them deliberately and you are taking responsibility, things will not change. Recognition, recognizing the need for financial dominion creates a sense of dissatisfaction. Ah, I can be more than this. Jabez looked at his life and said, come on, come on, come on. This is, no, this is not me, this is not me. He went before the Lord, he cried unto the Lord, and God heard his prayer. Until you are dissatisfied with where you are, until, until something in you says, you know what, no, 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 I, I don't want to be in this place again. There is a better place for me. But God cannot compel that to you. You have to compel that to yourself. And when God sees that, resources, creation and elements will begin to do what? Find evolving um, what parameters that will begin to evolve your life towards the plan of God. The, this pressures you to effect changes in your life by making new and quality decisions. Quality decisions. The year that we are in right now, don't forget, almost a year ago I've been telling us that things are going to happen. But what have you done with the information? Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You have not done anything. Nothing. You have not done anything. You have still been living the same life. Since you heard this information, what has changed in your savings? Still the same thing. Nothing has changed. I should be you buy. Phone, you change. $3,000 phone. And I'm wondering, just to talk? Just to talk. And then at the end of the month, you are paying to 200 to Rogers or to whatever. Then you sign a contract, 3,000 phone for two years. And I'm wondering, what kind of life are we living? Where you can go on Facebook and buy $300 one. And use that money invest into something else for your life. A lot of us, we must stop and understand this fact. A lot of us, we are eating our future today. And until you recognize the need for it, things will not change. I pray for you today that by this word, in the name of Jesus, the power of recognition will come upon you in the name of Jesus. I said, let it come upon you in the name of Jesus. Number two, quickly, you must go for knowledge. Knowledge must be part of what will evolve your life. There are many of us that have recognized the need but don't know what to do. Recognizing the need is not enough, but having the right knowledge on what to do to meet that need. Pursue the knowledge that is required for your financial dominion. Very, very important. There is knowledge. If you need to go back to school, go. If you need to go acquire knowledge, go. Don't just live a life of status quo. Don't just remain there. Don't just remain there. Things are evolving. If you need to change your path of uh, career, quickly do it. All of us that we came here as engineers, nobody is proud to be an engineer out now. Nobody is. Because there is nothing for engineers again. In those days, when we came 20 years ago, you became a geophysicist. Ah, and you're wondering, Kai, if you know how much they were paying them in those days. If you are a geophysicist right now, you are just dormant in this city. Because there's nothing for you. A geologist, nothing for you. Nothing for you. And you are still saying, carrying the uh, apega, apega. Change your line of. Change it, change it, change it, change it. 
change it. The time has passed in Calgary. In case you don't know, for some of us that have been here, in those days, some of us were changing jobs every three, three months. People were going for the highest bidder. The highest bidder. You go to a company and say, oh, another company just gave you a job. They said, how much? Can we give you $30,000 $30, more? You take it. Who send? When the money is good. But look at the season that you are in right now. Look at what has happened. Where is Shell in downtown? Where is Halliburton in downtown? Where are all of them? Where is Mobile in downtown? All those buildings are empty. They've all left Canada because engineering is dead. And you are still carrying, I'm an engineer, I'm an engineer. Go and change your course. Ah, no. Holy Spirit, open door, open door, open door. Knowledge tells you that nothing is happening again. It evolved into something else. I have friends that were engineers. Some of them are nurses now. Nurses now. I have friends, they were geologists. Some of them are teachers. Teaching children in schools now. They are under um, Abata children, what's it called? Calvary Board of Education. They changed their career paths. And so knowledge must speak for you and I in this season that you are in. Tell your neighbor, go for knowledge. Help me tell your neighbor, go for knowledge. Tell your neighbor, go for knowledge. In Osea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest to me. Because you have forgotten the love of your God, I also will forget your children. May that not be our portion in the name of Jesus. In going for knowledge, there are two dimensions that will, that will happen. Two things that will happen. Number one, there will be a paradigm shift. A change of mentality, ideology, ideologies, perception, and belief are not just information. The earlier you start, the better. Knowledge will cost you time, resources, and ego. Don't be greedy to yourself. Knowing is very costly. Knowing is very costly. Knowing is very costly. When you have knowledge, it gives you a paradigm shift. You see things differently. You see it differently. And so there are things that prayer will not do for you. Common sense must put all this in place. Proverbs 23, verse 23. But the, buy the truth <laughs> and do not sell it. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. We can see a business terminology being used here in acquiring truth, light, and revelation. Financial prosperity is not free, but requires certain knowledge to activate it. We have people, I know people, they were working with Shell. And I remember, he came and said, Pastor, I want to be building fences. I want to be doing basement. I said, the front number one question I asked, I said, is your wife in support? He said, my wife said, we're good. When he went and resigned at work, he told the manager that he was stepping down as, you know, somebody doing very well in the accounting industry. He said, the manager said to him, ah, are you okay that I'll give you one month? Go and think about it because this, this decision does not make sense. The guy said, I'm done, I'm going. Not up to six months after, the company crashed. And there's never been a better yesterday. You see, wisdom is very important. When you have knowledge, it gives you a paradigm shift. It changes your ideologies. Remember when Pastor Awashika came, when we were at the other location, there are some things that she said that I will never forget. She said, because of the knowledge that she has, she has empowered her children to make sure that all of them they school in different parts of the world because when you school in different parts of the world, you get different knowledge so that our children will never be disadvantaged in life. And that is the plan of God for you and I. You see, it is only because you have not been to somebody else's farm you think your father's farm is the biggest. Sure. You think you are living good life here. Go to some other countries, you will see better life. You will see better life. My wife is a realtor. She took us to one house at a... After Pastor Babatunde's house, what's that place? In the northwest. No, 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 not Aspen. Spring Bank. Ha! She said, come and see, come and see my husband. When I got to that house, I simmered. I said, hey, in this city, people are living like this? In this city? When we opened the garage, Ferrari, Lamborghini. I said, in this city? People are living like this? <laughs> I said, oh my God. So, so people are living like this. You will think you are doing well until you see some other people. The Bible says for the path of a just man is like a shining light. It keeps getting brighter and brighter until the perfect day. If where you were last year is where this year will end with you, you have failed God. If your financial dominion in 2022 was worse in 2023, you have failed God because you lack knowledge. You lack knowledge. You lack knowledge. Help me tell your neighbor, go for knowledge. Tell your neighbor, go for knowledge. 
Number two and three, and then we'll stop here, we'll continue next week. Understand the economic system of the kingdom. There is a way the financial system of the kingdom runs that we must all be aware of. Not knowing this, <laughs> we'll put you at a high detriment. One of the foremost laws of the kingdom, if you have never planted, don't expect to, to what, get a harvest. If you have never planted, let me tell you something. A lot of us here don't sow. And you are shortchanging yourself. You are shortchanging yourself. A lot of us say we don't sow. We don't sow. We don't. You see, there are things. The Bible says when the children of, uh, the Bible was talking about, uh, was it Elisha? Who was it? That they wanted to build for Elisha. And they went and cut uh, the tree. He said the axe head fell. Who brought it out for them? Was it a good gesture? It was. But who was the person that did it for them? Was it not the man of God? Was the man of God. You see, there are so many things that we take for granted in life. Life, the kingdom, if you have never sown, you can never reap. It's your sowing that determines what you reap. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It is your sowing. A lot of us, it is your sowing that determines what you reap. I learned something recently. Even for my children, for their marriage, I've started sowing. That my daughter, God forbid that she should marry a wicked man. God forbid in my lifetime. But it will come through prayer. I must sow into it. My sons, in their years, when they are enjoying, in my later years, I don't want to be going for night vigil when I should be on a cruise with my wife all around the world, knowing that they are well. This is the time to sow for it. This is the time. And so we learn. When we wanted to do a small project on our house, when we wanted to start, we started. When we started, I brought a man of God. I said, sir, speak to this land. That this house will not stop. The man spoke. When he was going, thank you, sir. Boom. Life is about seed and harvest time. That is the way the kingdom rules. A lot of us will pray and fast, and God is saying, you don't understand the kingdom rule. You have broken it, so I can't do anything. Number three, you must apply what you know by taking action. On, knowledge is useless when it is not applied consistently. It is useless when it is not applied continuously. I pray for you. We'll continue next week. That in the name of Jesus, and that was why, you know, I know what I was doing when the Lord said, we do it every year. You think it's just because we want to just ask for your money that we give that to you. We give him a gift every year. That is the high priest of this commission. We see the kind of life that is living, evolving from glory to glory. We think we are living here. In 2021, when I was privileged to go to camp, I saw that this house. I say, hey, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you would think people are enjoying this part of the world. They're not enjoying anything. <laughs> you need to go to, you see the kind of life some people are even living in the same, in the place that we call destitute in Nigeria. It will, it will humble you. It will humble you. It will humble you. When daddy was ready to go that day, when he was going, daddy, when Christian, he got into his mail back in camp. Made back in camp. And I'm saying, Jesus Christ. I'm not surprised because I remember the year we gave Rolls Royce. It is about life. It's about seed time and harvest time. You have never sown. No matter your prayer, your prayer must anchor on something, a principle in the kingdom. And until God sees that you have fulfilled the essence of that principle, he will not activate the blessing that should come with it. Tithe and offering you don't pay. Offering you don't give. Special seed you don't give. Building fund you don't give. And you're telling God to enlarge your coast. From where? Which God? For what reason? I want us to wake up this month and take responsibility. Let me tell you something. I learned something years back. Whether you give or you don't give, it will never be enough. <gasps> You're all quiet. Whether you give or you don't give, it will never be enough. But I've decided, scripture, one scripture that propels my life is this. He said, the needy will always be in your midst, but I've decided it will never be me. He said, for the needy, the poor will always be in your midst. He said, why must it be me? They didn't put a name. Why must my name be there? I pray for you. When the account of glorious people enjoying financial dominion will be mentioned, their names, may your names be included in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. Lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Talk to him. Say, Father, I need your help in this area. Have you recognized it, that you need it? 
the law of recognition. Let it take place. Let it take preeminence. The law of recognition. I want you to recognize that you need it. 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 The law of recognition. The law of recognition. You need it. You need it. You need it. The law of recognition. You need it. You need it. You must live a life that when your children, when you are gone, they will bless you forever. The God that created you. How do you tell your children about the God that they're blessing the goodness in your life? I want you to come to that point of recognition. Lord, I have, I have recognized I need a change in my finances. It's not just about faith. There's responsibility that you need to take. Can I hear you pray for 30 more seconds? Can I hear you pray for 25 more seconds? Can the law of recognition be at work in you? Have you recognized it and tell the Lord, Lord, my life financially can be better. My life financially can be better. It 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 can be better. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Amen. You know, there are things that we need to see that will compel you that God is good. I once met a man. And all of a sudden, back in Nigeria then, well-known man from Undo State. I studied this man. Very humble man. Very humble man. He was serving in his church. The church needed things and was providing. Even when it was not enough, then the man of God came and said, you know what God said to tell you? All the seeds that you have sown, he said, God is giving you grace. For what? For creative ideas. And the man shouted, Amen. Not too long from then, the man went into cocoa farming. He went, he resigned and went into cocoa farming. If you've ever heard the name Akin Shikwe, they live in Ibadan. You see, after about 10 years, this man's life changed. The gate of his house was an elephant that opens into two. And God blessed this man so much that every year when Mercedes-Benz, they release a car, they send one to him. He doesn't call for it. They send it to him in peace. So if you go into his garage, you will see from 1980, all the Mercedes-Benz, you will see everything there. What am I saying? But you know what? He paid the price. He understood what meant to be. Now, I've met people in this land. They have four or five children. All their children have houses that they bought for them. They secured it for them. They have accounts that they put $250,000 to each of their children for their future. And these are not Christians. But we are too spiritual. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, be sensible, be sensible, be sensible. Use your brain. Use your brain. Open your eyes. Jesus said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. You cannot just be praying without watching. The season we're in is delicate. Families will be torn apart because of money. But you can cry to God if you recognize that there is a need for it in your life. I want you to take responsibility, House of David, that your life can be better. That things can be better for your children. Don't shortchange the future of your children by you not being, what, endowed financially. Lift up here and say, Father, I recognize. Oh, can you say it louder? Say, Father, I recognize the need for a change in my financial dominion. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I want you to go throughout this week. Be conscious of it and be prayerful. Be conscious of it and be prayerful. And I pray that the Lord will change our status financially in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed this morning? Lift up your hands and give Jesus praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Fellowship will be taking place today at all centers at 6 30 p.m. And the topic is dress code and lifestyle. We look forward to seeing you there.
The good women of House of David Calgary invite you to our breakfast meeting for the year 2024. We shall be considering the topic emotional abuse in a Christian marriage. How do we deal with physical or emotional abuse in a Christian marriage? And what are the steps to overcome marital trauma? Join us for this amazing discussion on April 28th, 2024 at exactly 10 a.m. And our speaker for the day will be Pastor Georgina Inwoke. The venue is at the Rivera Plaza and Conference Center, 3515 26th Street, North East Calgary. Invite a friend and we look forward to seeing you there. The Lighthouse Fellowship will be having its upcoming monthly meeting on the 13th of April at 12 noon. And the venue is 182A-2016-25 Avenue, Northeast Calgary. The theme for this meeting is Building Mental and Emotional Resilience. And ministering to us will be our very own Pastor Georgina. Okay. Please endeavor to attend. We'll be having our men's monthly prayer meeting on the 27th of April via Zoom from 9 to 10 p.m. Please endeavor to attend. Bible study for this month continues this Tuesday with a very touchy subject on divorce. Invite friends and you also don't want to miss this and the other topics we have for the rest of the month. The other topics are Parenting Today and God's Economy. A dedicated Slido platform has been created for accumulating questions, especially sensitive ones. Kindly scan the QR code or go to slido.com and use the code HOD Bible Study to start posting your anonymous questions. The Marriages Under 10 group will be meeting on Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. Ministering at the fellowship will be Pastors Benga and Abiola Komalafe. Thank you for listening. God bless you and have a great week. Lord, House of David, praise Master Jesus. If you know you've been blessed this morning, just give the Lord God Almighty a round of applause. It's always so good to see our beautiful faces in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has blessed us so much and God has given us his word. May his word never be lacking in our midst in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, we're going to give our tithe and we're going to give our offering this morning. Hallelujah. If you need to use the POS system, please go to the back and see the ushers. Hallelujah. So as we prepare our tithes and our offering, um, I would love to welcome a very special people in our midst this morning. If today is your very first time, if you're worshiping with us for the first time in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, House of David, can you please signify by waving your hands? If today is your first time, I see one hand, I see two, I see three, um, I see more hands coming up, I see another one at the back. House of David, can we please rise up and welcome them? Can you please stand to your feet if today is your first time? If today is your first time, please rise to your feet. We would love to welcome you, the House of David way. Um, there are some people also online watching us. If today is your first time it's joining us online, can you please scan the QR code? We would love to welcome you. Somebody will get in touch with you. Thank you very much for joining. House of David, can we show some love? He has brought you to fellowship with us. so much for coming. We really appreciate you being here. On behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ and the lead pastors in the house, Pastor Tubasu and Monisha Omi, and the entire leadership team and the whole congregation, we welcome you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
We are a parish of the redeemed Christian Church of God. We are just one of the many parishes. Praise the Lord. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in this season. In the name of Jesus, for now we meet here in this auditorium every Sunday morning starting from 9 a.m. with Sunday school and we proceed into our service at 10. Um, you are more than welcome to join us if you don't have a home church. May the Lord God Almighty bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming. After church, we would love for you to wait like at the back at my right hand side. We have a token. We just have a little gift for you. So after service, please wait behind. Hallelujah. Just a few announcements here before we, um, before we go ahead um, to give our tithes and our offerings. Praise the Lord. We're visiting Glory Tabernacle today. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord God Almighty a round of applause again. As we have been told, children are not allowed inside. They can wait in the car and would have ushers and the protocols will help us. It would be... Um, we will go in in batches, so we will drive immediately after service, we will drive out there. So please make sure you make arrangements for the kids, maybe waiting in the car or whatever, or maybe one parent will go in and another, praise the Lord. Let's just plan it that way, children will not be allowed inside just for safety reasons. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And if you are here, you don't have your own car and you need transportation to the venue or to the um, to Glory Tabernacle, please talk to Dikin Dakpo. Dikin Dakpo, can you please wave your hand? If for adventure you need a ride, Dikin Dakpo, please rise to your feet so that they can all see you. They know who to come and meet. Hallelujah. Please talk to him uh, immediately after service. May the Lord God Almighty help us. Um, the next workers' training starts soon. Kindly register with uh, Brother Adeoye or Yawoye or Pastor Femi Aladeyelu. If you are yet to complete your workers in training, please do so. Um, this is applicable to all volunteer workers, hallelujah, intended new workers who have completed their baptismal class. So please, workers in training start soon. Please see Brother Oyawoye and Pastor Femi. Um, for more registration, hallelujah. And then um, maybe last announcement, um, coming from the men and the women's um, department um, regarding pastor's birthday happening July 27. Let's give the Lord God Almighty a round of applause. I know the announcement went out. Um, they are telling me to tell you, Ooh, hallelujah. They are telling me to tell you that the only thing or the only way you are guaranteed a seat at, um, at the birthday celebration is only if you are RSVP. You have to register. You are not just going to be assumed that because you're a church member, you will get a seat. No. They said if you are coming and you're a church member, you need to register. The link was sent out. Um, I guess they will send the links out on um, the different platforms again. That way, we know that you are coming and you are guaranteed a spot. Praise the Lord. And this would also help them to plan. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let us rise to our feet as we give joyfully unto the Lord this morning. Let us rise to our feet as we give joyfully unto the Lord this morning. But before we give, we're going to, we're going to bless our offering I want you to say a word. We've listened to the word this morning. A lot has happened. I want you to say a word. I want you to send your seed on an errand. Ask that may your finances or may your money, whatever you're giving, your seed, will it evolve for you in the name of Jesus? That the Lord God Almighty, that your seed will be that which God will remember you for, for good. We give you the wisdom, the knowledge, everything that is required, the season to move you to the next level of your life in the name of Jesus. I want you to bless your seed. Be deliberate this morning, this morning to blessing your seed. Ask that the Lord God Almighty will bless it for you. Not me, but God himself will bless it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Don't forget, today is our Thanksgiving service and we're going to dance to the front. Ushers, can you please help with coordinating? Hallelujah. I will lift up my voice, I will joyfully sing, not for what you have done for me, but for who you are, you are the reason I live, and I in my heart, the song that I sing, I will raise your life to you.
about the presence of my maker. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for fighting our battles for us. Every day he fights for you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to bring the service to an end by singing our family song. But before we do that, just quickly from the marriage committee department, um, marriage is under 10. Um, as we can see, the date is clashing. There's going to be a new date that will be announced. Marriage is under 10. It will be moved from April 20th. A new date will be announced to us and shared on our platforms. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us bring the service to an end by singing our family song. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, I set us free from the law of sin and death, and so sin will no longer have dominion over us from the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwells on the inside of us, and it quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Give somebody a high five and tell them to have a wonderful week. Praise the Lord. Media, can you please help us to